Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage. So for today's episode we are back with a preview spotlight and I show you what to buy March 2020. No, I'm sorry. We're in March 2020. I'm showing you what to buy in May of 2020. <laughs> if you don't know what the previews guide is, the previews guide is what your retailer uses to order all the books that they get in their shop. And they put this out and Diamond lets you pick it up. I think it costs like three or four bucks to buy. And it shows you everything that's coming out. And you're like, hey, go and get me this book. So there you go. All right, let's get started. Like always, we start with DC. Now, uh, the last couple months, the big two have kind of been kind of, I don't know, lacking in books. And Indy really kind of stepped it up. But this month, you know, we have a lot of really good stories coming out for DC and for Marvel. But first, let's show we have Dark Knight's death metal now i mean we had some really interesting stuff come out of dark knight's metal uh last year the year before i didn't even know what it was but really did it warrant a sequel i mean i just i don't i i don't know oh <sighs> yeah i mean what do we got from that we had the batman who laughs yes and the batman who laughs <laughs> but hey we got some cool covers coming out and wonder woman gets a chainsaw I'm going to let that sink in for a second. All right. Anyway, we do have some cool covers, though. That really, that art germ Wonder Woman cover coming out is pretty cool. I have no idea what the hell's going on with Superman there. But anyway, get ready for the Earth-shattering encore. When the Earth is enveloped by the dark multiverse, the Justice League is at their mercy at the Batman who laughs. Humanity struggles to survive in a hellish landscape, and people come and save the day. There you go. If you're in a DC, buy that. All right, next up. Now, I don't know why they split this into two pages, so it makes it a little hard to read and comprehend. I even put this in a two-page format. And apparently, in the book, one page is on the preceding side and the other page is on the other side. So they don't even go together in the book. <sighs> All right. So what do we have here? We have this whole Generation 1 thing that DC Comics is doing. And what they're doing, they are launching a series of one-shot specials that detail the history of DC Universe, starting with Wonder Woman. So the first, we are here, it says right there, you are here, Generation 1, and then they go to G2, and they get to G3, 4, and 5, and it actually... Uh, gets progressively modern and tells stories. Now, uh, I don't know if anybody's been keeping up on the news, but if Ethan Van Skyver is to be, be believed, he said that uh, this whole G5 event is what they're calling it that is happening, that if this fails, AT&T is going to shut down DC Comics because they are not happy with their publishing division. Now, this does not mean DC will be closing altogether. They're just going to stop putting out comic books. Uh, you know, and a lot of these big companies, even Disney, is saying that they do not need comic books anymore to sell the movies. So it's, I, I've been hearing rumors that even Joe Quesada has been having, you know, behind the scenes close talks with Disney to keep Marvel open. So who knows what's going on there? All right, so. And what do we got here? We still have Batman The Adventure Continues from the visionary producers of Batman The Animated Series. We have a new breakout series coming out. Actually, this Dave Johnson cover is pretty cool. I like that. So that's coming out. The Adventure Continues. Uh, in this opening chapter, Wayne Enterprises in Gotham City is attacked by a giant robot that steals an entire room from the laboratory. So it looks like this is actually a continuation of the Batman Adventure Series, which was also Batman The Animated Series. So... That should be a lot of fun if you were a fan of that series back in the day. All right, what else do we got coming out here? We have the Green Lantern 80th Anniversary 100-page Super Spectacular. That would explain why DC is really pushing all of these anniversaries and 750-issue parties. And, ooh, we have all these covers that are 10 bucks a piece. Buy, buy, buy. We need money. So, there you go. So, we have this coming out. Oh, and then Batman 94. I don't even know what's going on here. Oh, we have this whole Joker War thing happening. That's right. Oh, meat punchline. I'm a flash in the pan. All right. So anyway, Joker War explodes, explodes with Batman number 95. And this starts... Uh, let's see. It was always going to come to this. The Clown Prince of Crime and the Dark Knight Detective go head-to-head -head for the last time. The Joker has never wanted to win before. He's never won his battle with Batman to end, but now his motivation has shifted. He has decided that one way or another, this will be the final chapter to their story. The Joker War begins here. 
I've got this pretty cool variant cover coming out. Actually, it sounds like a pretty neat story. We have a couple tie-in issues that I will show. All right, what else we got here? We also have Batman the Killer Smile issue number one coming out. And this is the epilogue to Joker Killer Smile. And this is written by Jeff Lemire, who is an awesome writer. So that should be a pretty decent read. It is DC Black Label, except expect mature themes and situations. All right, let's see. Jump ahead. Uh, all right, come on, DC. I don't know why DC does this every month. It's just slow loading. All right, Man Bat number one. We got Man Bat getting his own little mini here. One of five, 32 pages. For years, Kirk Langstrom has struggled with his monstrous alter ego, Man Bat, and the serum that transformed him. But he's finally hit rock bottom following a devastating setback, and he's going to take out his anger on every single citizen of Gotham City. So this Kyle Holtz cover is really cool. I like it better than the variant cover. I mean, seriously, that dude there just looks like one of the gargoyles from the Gargoyles TV show. <laughs> this is actually scary. I dig that. All right, then we have Manhunters, The Secret History number one. We have uh, the revelation of Leviathan's true identities in the pages of Event Leviathan. If you guys are reading that, this is a spinoff from that. Kate Spencer, an earlier Manhunter, must go on a quest to uncover just how deep Leviathan's plans go. I dig this Jay Lee variant cover, though. That's actually really cool. Jay Lee is really kicking it up. Uh, with his artwork and doing some work. He's got he got stuff going on for DC, Marvel, and Dynamite this month, I believe, for the month of May. Okay, let's see. Next up, Batgirl issue number 47. This is a Joker War tie-in, and Joker is going to visit Barbara Gordon. That is never a good thing. Catwoman 23. Now, I just want to show this for that awesome cover. Beautiful cover. This can totally be a cover grab for a lot of people, probably myself included. Wu Chu Li. Awesome. And then Detective Comics issue number 1023. We have a Joker War tie-in issue. So those are the two tie-in issues for Joker War for the month of May. And, uh, yeah. Next up, what do we got here? Oh, hey, Supergirl issue number 42. This is the final issue. Supergirl is shutting down. So, you know, she'll probably get another series in like four months anyway, if DC's still around. <laughs> Variant cover by Derek Chu. Oh, the Supergirl looking all cute, taking a selfie or something with her phone. Yay. All she's missing is duck lips. All right, issue number, here we go. Joe Hill Comics, The Low, Low Woods. Now, a lot of these Hill House books has been absolutely amazing. But even if you are not reading this, you're going to want this Jenny Friesen variant cover. Just look at that book. Man, that thing is beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, come on, DC Comics. We only have three more pages to go, and you are not going to show them to me, are you? Hey, look, Lucifer. Come on, what are you doing? Okay, here we go. Facsimile Edition's coming out. We have Green Lantern 76 Facsimile Edition. If you don't know what facsimiles are, they are a page-by-page -page perfect reprint down to the advertisements of the original book that came out Minus the price tag. They will be a little bit more expensive. <laughs> we have Man Bat number one facsimile edition. His first issue from back in the day. And then we also have this cool Wonder Woman number one from 1987 facsimile edition. Some beautiful George Perez artwork going on there. Okay, and then we have a bunch of dollar comics coming out. Including Dark Knight's Metal number one. Because of the Death Metal. Ugh. And we also have this Manhunter number one, another gorgeous Jay Lee cover from back then. I've never seen that cover before, and I absolutely adore it. So I might just grab that just for that cover. All right, guys, that's DC for the month. Next up, we have our Marvel Guide. All right, so let's just jump right on in here. What do we got? Well, Marvel's still running through their whole empire storyline with stuff happening in space and the Kree and the scrolls and the thing and the stuff and a new emperor. 
Yay! All right. This is the neat thing, though. Empire, X-Men number one and two of four. Alien plants versus mutant zombies. I love this. Eric, is this, is this real? As real as you and I, Charles. <laughs> plants people from outer space have come to Earth, and would you know it? They just happen to be here when millions of mutants rise as undead creatures hungry for human flesh. The X-Men return to Genosha in a tale so crazy it's taking the entire writing crew of the X-Men line to tackle it. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Covers to be revealed. Now, uh, the one thing I would be pointing out is they have this whole slew of dark variants coming out for this month. Uh, some of them look really cool. And to me, it looks like Marvel is just trying to take some of the thunder away from death metal from DC Comics because they're all like these evil sort of crazy crazy variant covers and i'm really excited for a lot of them okay so let's see let's just keep going here okay we have this whole empire little uh mini series tie-ins that are happening like we have empire captain america the invasion has made landfall and captain stands on the front lines Woo! we must stop empire we have the savage avengers we must stop empire <laughs> i mean that's pretty much what all these issues are then we have Storm Ranger. Now, this actually sounds kind of cool. The Kree nano suit known as Storm Ranger was once bonded to Miss Marvel, but after deciding Kamala's version of justice wasn't deadly enough, Storm Ranger rebelled against her. I don't blame it. I don't like Kamala Khan either. <laughs> All right, Empire Thor, issue number one of three. Okay, let's see. What else do we got here? Uh, what are you? Is that Wonder Woman? <laughs> all right this is actually the squadron supreme they got in their own little one of two uh thingamabob going on as well okay one more let's see what this is and then we have empire invasion of wakanda so we have that as well so we have all these empire ties in if you guys are interested in any of that kind of stuff Oh, and then we have some that are continuing on here. Empire Ghost Rider, issue number one. Maybe this is a... Yeah, this is just a one-shot. 40 pages. An intergalactic war comes crashing into the supernatural. You hear it? Intergalactic war crashing. Intergalactic war crashing. <laughs> okay, we get it. There's an intergalactic war everywhere, and it's crashing down upon them. All right, what else do we got here? Oh, aren't you pretty? All right, <laughs> Lords of Empire. The Celestial Messiah. Uh, all right, I'm just going to skip over that. The Union, issue number one of five. So we have Britannia, Snakes, the Choir, and Kelpie. These are all British superheroes getting together and doing their own thing, battling the Empire as well because it's crashing down on them. All right, whoever wrote these little things, their little blurbs, needs to get fired. Um, that's a fledgling team pushed to their limits. And yes, they are all from the United Kingdom. Oh, also Union Jack is in this as well. That actually might be kind of fun. There is their first cover. Oh, what did I just do? No, get out of here. I actually went to the preview site because if you click it, it's actually active links. Yay. All right. Uh, let's see. What else? Let's just jump ahead here. So that's all the Empire stuff. There's a whole slew of it going on. If you're reading it, keep reading it. If not, yeah. All right. And then also, oh, what is this? Yeah, Captain Marvel number 19. She is actually an accuser. So we have issue number 18 and 19 going on for the month, probably the beginning and the end. So Carol Danvers is now the new accuser for the Kree Scroll Empire. She carries the weapon supreme. All right, Juggernaut's getting his own new mini-series. We've got five issues coming out there. This is a variant cover. We also got variants by Scotty Young, who is a fan favorite. Cool Juggernaut cover there. It's actually really neat. I like that. Some of the interior art looking really good. Sometimes this black and white, this black and white artwork can be really striking. I like it a lot. Okay, we also got X Men: God Loves Man Kills extended cut issue number two. Uh, amazing story. Everybody should have read that by now. X Men number twelve facsimile edition. The first appearance of Juggernaut is also coming out again. Facsimile edition. I explained what this was during the DC segment. 
Eh, it looks like a Phantomex is getting his own giant size issue number one. I believe it was last month where all these new giant size issues have started. They're one shots. They're huge. And uh, they tell different stories of different X-Men. All right. Let's see what else we got here. X-Factor. Now, again, here we go. Now, nothing really spectacular about X-Factor number two. But here is the Dark Marvel variant I was telling you about. And, you know, it looks like they're trying to, like I said, sort of steal some of uh, uh, Death Metal's thunder by putting out these awesome, awesome sort of metal covers, you know. Dark Marvel variants. Uh, there's some really, really good ones coming up that I cannot wait to get my hands on. And there's a lot they haven't shown, so it's going to be rather exciting to see what those pop up into. Giant Size X-Men Tribute to Ween and Cockrum. Now, this is celebrating the X-Men's 45th, or the classic X-Men's 45th anniversary. Here is the wraparound variant cover by Ed McGuinness. Uh, also covers by David Cockrum. Uh, two different covers by Ada, uh, David Cockrum and Addie Granoff cover. And look at all of the artists and writers. This is insane. Now, let me explain to you what this is and why you should buy this. 45 years ago, a comic book came out that would change the face of Marvel Comics forever. Writer Len Wein and artist Dave Cockrum revamped the X-Men completely, replacing the bulk of the teen heroes with a completely new international cast. The legendary one-shot took comic fans by storm and set the series off in a new direction, setting the stage for the legendary X-Scribe Chris Claremont, what he wrote it for like 16 years, to make them the most popular heroes in the Marvel Universe. Now, 37 of Marvel's top artists, reread that, 37 of Marvel's top artists come together to recreate this epic story, each one redrawing one pulse-pounding page in a tribute to this Marvel masterpiece. Now, look at this. Even Alex Ross is in on this. I mean, this is going to be absolutely amazing. We got Bernard Chan, we got Aaron Cooter. We have a lot of, uh, we have Mark Brooks, a lot of these Young Guns guys popping in here. Uh, I cannot wait to see how this is going. I mean, this is just going to... Jen Bartel is in there. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what their new take is going to be on these classic pages. Here is our Addie Granoff cover. And that's a bit of a throwback right there. So that's just going to be beautiful. Cannot wait for that. Who are you? I'm Baby Cable. I don't even know what's going on there. I don't think I want to. Oh no, the death of Kitty Pride. Spoilers. <laughs> Actually, that was last month that she had died. So everybody knows she's probably dead already. All right, let's see. What else we got going on here? I lost my page. Where am I at? Really? I just get that far ahead? All right, and then we have The Marvels. And this is an ongoing series. Uh, brought to us by Alex Ross and Kurt Busiek. It's going to be kind of a spinoff from the original Marvel series that came out back in the day. Oh, God, it was such an amazing, amazing series. I'm glad to see an ongoing from this. Okay, let's see. Next up, oh, look at this. Avengers Marvel Snapshot. Now, that's just worth buying it just for that beautiful Alex Ross Iron Man right there. And then the Marvel Snapshot Spider-Man as well. I mean, these are just, I love this guy's artwork. He just draws everyone as if they were real. It's absolutely amazing. Here we go. Venom issue number 26. And I have no idea what is going on on this page, but issue 25 is supposed to be pretty much groundbreaking. It's supposed to be insane how uh, how the storyline of Venom Island is supposed to finish. So I, I don't know. I see a Venom symbiote there with an Iron Man suit combined together. So that says Venom Beyond begins here. No idea what is happening, but you do not want to miss that. Along with issue number tw uh, 25, everybody should be grabbing that. All right, then we have an amazing Spider-Man issue number 101 facsimile. We got good old Morbius showing up there. And then we have a Werewolf by Night issue number 32 facsimile. Of course, everybody knows Moon Knight popping in that one.
Here's that Doctor Strange, but again, I just wanted to show it for this Dark Marvel variant. I mean, look at that. That is just crazy. I don't even know what is happening there. Uh, yeah, like I said, most of these books are getting a Dark Marvel variant, but they're not showing what they are yet, so it's going to be a surprise or they might pop up later. Now, look at this Doctor Doom dark marvel variant now i mean if that's not a cover grab right there i mean, i don't even know what is that is just amazing i think i might need to get a hold of like 10 of those things because wow that is just awesome i actually think that just might go up in value did you hear the pen click i'm writing it down because i'm gonna buy i'm serious like 10 of them dr doom eight dark marvel All right, so that's actually it for Marvel Comics for the month. Next up, we will go to the big book. And this encompasses everything else that is not Marvel or DC. All right, let's just jump right on in here. Now, usually the first 50 pages of this book are complete and utter fluff. So we're just going to jump straight ahead into Image Comics. And then we have The Goddamned, which is the Virgin Brides, issue number one of five, Gem of the Month. Now, this is written by Jason Aaron. Wow, this guy is an amazing, amazing writer. I love his stuff, so I'm very excited for this. In the time before the Great Flood, the world of man is a place of wanton violence and unbridled depravity. But hidden atop a mountain, there is a very different sort of world. One without men. Here, the Holy Sisters at a secret nunnery live in paradise. A new Eden rearing their flock of orphan girls to embrace their future as blessed brides of the sons of God. But when Shari and JL, two girls on the cusp of flowering, uncover what it truly means to become a bride, they realize there's only one way to escape the bonds of matrimony. Run like hell. Very, very, <laughs> very, very cool. I like the sound of that. All right, let's see what else we got here. Next up, also from Image Comics, The Texas, That Texas Blood, issue number one. Now, I originally wasn't going to show this because, I mean, it sounds kind of okay. This is here. This, it's a neo-Western crime series. Kicks off when the search for a casserole dish leads to a dark, intense confrontation on the Sheriff Joe Bob Coates' 70th birthday. I was like, all right, you know, you know, I enjoyed Longmire. Who doesn't? All right. And I was like, okay. But then they gave us a couple quick pages down here. And I read these pages and I was actually hooked. I want to read more. So good. So yeah, I had to throw this in here and tell everybody to grab this. I mean, the very last page here got very tense. I, we don't even, they don't show you what the sheriff sees in the back seat of this truck. Or it's just, I don't know, it looks really, really good. So I want to read more of this. Also from Image Comics this one, this month, we have A Man Among Ye, issue number one. High adventures on the high seas in the waning days of piracy, when men were men and the best pirates were women. So this is all about women privateers. Uh, we have some great artwork. The dialogue was amazing. We have some cool covers. Now, the original cover, awesome. Variant cover, just as good. I don't know which one I would pick up because they are both amazing. Uh, and the story sounds really cool. I'm very excited for this one. I believe this was a diamond... No, it wasn't even a diamond spotlight. So I'm telling you to buy this. All right? Get it. Let's jump ahead. Oh, Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. Now, I am a huge, 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 huge fan of Neil Gaiman. A few years back, he wrote a novel about Norse mythology, retelling some of the classic stories. And now we are getting the comic book treatment of that novel. Uh, it features stories of Thor and Odin and Loki, and not the Marvel characters, but the actual Norse gods and their mythology. I'm also a huge mythology buff, so that's really, really right up my alley. Oh, I had to show this. Man, would you look at that. I don't know if we have any manga or anime fans out there. This is the deluxe embossed casing with sewn binding and ribber, ribbon marker Helsing Deluxe Volume. 696 pages. Now this does not come out until June 15th. It's available in the original Helsing format of 7x10. 
and it costs $50. This is going to be worth every single penny. Okay, next up. <laughs> yes, I am spotlighting this. A four-issue miniseries weekly in May. That means every week we get... Friendship in Disguise, the Transformers My Little Pony crossover, the crossover you never knew that you wanted. <laughs> we got four issues. There's the first one. It comes out the first week of May, 32 pages. And then we have the next three come following in the, in the subsequent weeks, each one a week for four weeks. Oh, I'm so excited about this. We got the covers by Tony Fleeks. What I'm actually very excited about. These come out in May. I have my con coming in June. So hopefully I can pick these up because Tony Fleeks is always at my local con. And I would love to get a set of these and get them signed. It'd be so much fun. The guy is awesome. He's a really, really cool dude. Okay, what else do we got here? Now, IDW is just kind of kicking butt this month. They got a bunch of cool stuff coming out. This here, they are putting out Marvel Action, Captain Marvel issue number one. Yes, this is a Captain Marvel story done by IDW. It's kind of interesting how they do that. They just put in all kinds of weird stuff. Not sure how they get the licenses or work out the marketing deals or whatever, but they pull it off. All right. Then, oh, this, you know, if you were a fan of of the Ninja Turtle series on at Image Comics, what was it, ooh, 20 years ago, something like that? You need to buy this. Here is the final issue of Urban Legends, issue number 25. The truth behind Lady Shredder is revealed. What does this mean for the turtles? What does it mean for Karai? I, maybe Donatello has some answers in this penultimate issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Urban Legends. Oh, here we go. Here's another one coming out from IDW. Like I said, IDW is just kind of rocking it for the month. Bermuda, issue number one of four, four-issue miniseries from the award-winning writer John Lehman, who wrote Detective and Chew. We all know Chew. Huge book. There's a region in the Atlantic Ocean where planes disappear, ships are lost, and traveling souls go missing, never to be heard from again. And there's an island within this place, mysterious and uncharted, the Savage Lands? No. Uncharted by time and untouched by civilization, where all who are lost end up. Bermuda lives here. She's a 16 scrappy and survivor, and a survivor. And this has been the only life she has ever known until today. She discovered something on her island that will either open a door between the world and ours or destroy it. That sounds really cool. I love the Bermuda Triangle stories. You know, growing up in the 80s, it was a big deal. Everybody talking about the Bermuda Triangle for the longest time. I mean, it was just, there was TV shows and movies and all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's kind of neat to see all that. Also coming up for the month, Sea of Sorrows, deep sea adventure with a horrific twist from the creative team behind last year's hit horror series, Road of Bones, comes a new tale of bone-chilling terror. In the aftermath of the Great War, the North Atlantic is ripe for plunder by independent salvage crews. So we have some former naval officers who hire this ragab or this vagabond ship, they call it, to lead them to a sunken U-boat and a fortune in gold. And then there's mystery and intrigue, and they all want to kill each other and double-cross and and murder and stuff so actually sounds right up my alley i love that then we have chain to the grave issue number one of five coming out outlaw ray mason has come back from the dead chained to the headstone that marked his grave it's a lawless time a magical time <laughs> and the undead ray soon finds himself caught between a rock and a hard place as he sets out in search of treasure but Ray, trying to do the right by his wife and child he left behind, soon finds out that everything is not always as it seems. And let's jump ahead. Let's see what else we got here. We're coming at you from Dynamite Comics. And we have The Sacred Six, issue number one. And this is a bunch of kind of supernatural characters that are jumping out of Dynamite Comics. Some of them come from Vampirella. We have Chastity from Chaos. And they are all forming this kind of super group. <laughs> It does sound like a lot of fun. We have this beautiful Jay Lee cover again. We got Chastity with her awesome hair going on there. Uh, if you're a Vampirella fan, if you're a Chaos fan, if you're a Supernatural fan, I would definitely recommend you jump on this. And we have some beautiful covers. Like oh, Dynamite always puts out at least six or seven covers. 
and then you get virgin variants and all kinds of stuff as well. There's also a little intro story that is illustrated by Jay Lee as well. Okay, then we have Vampirella, issue number three, a 1969 replica edition. Again, this is like the facsimile editions from Marvel and DC, and it's a replica, exact replica of issue number 30 from 1969. Yes, Vampirella has been around that long. It's a Joe Lintzner cover going on there for Sacred Six. I love Joe Lintzner artwork. All right, let's see what is next. Oh, actually, is it Vampirella number 11 here? Nope. You know, also for this month, we have a ton of these Jim Lee homage covers. Uh, I that there is like one of his Batman covers. Um, what else did I see? And of course, here's the Virgin variants, 50 bucks. If you guys are interested in those. There are some that I recognize and some that I don't. Uh, let's see. Come on, what do we got here? Oh, Army of Darkness, gotta love that. See, here's a Jim Lee homage cover. I don't know where that one came from though, so somebody fill me in. Do you see that Army of Darkness one right there? So, I mean, these could be a lot of fun to collect. Here's a Deja Thoris one, and that's actually, that should be a Wolverine cover if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Come on. I know there's a couple more here. Oh, yeah. There's one. Another Jim Lee homage cover. There's one more. And again, I don't know where that came from. I, it looks like a Batman cover to me because you can see the, the big boot in the face. But, like, again... Correct me if I'm wrong, people. I mean, it might be kind of fun to figure out where all these came from. Do, do, do. Oh, Betty and Veronica meet <laughs> Red Sonia and Vampirella. You gotta love that. Hey, and we got a Bill and Ted uh, homage cover there. Uh, Red Sonia number five. Oh, look at that beautiful Jay Lee. This is another one right here that I'm probably going to end up ordering 10 copies of. And uh, I will probably get two or three of the Virgin variant as well. Those are 50 bucks a pop. Oh, here's the other homage variant. Now, I'm pretty sure this is from X-Men number one, one of the five gatefold covers. I believe this is the one that had Wolverine on it, Wolverine and Cyclops. So, yeah, I mean, that's just going to be a lot of fun if you're, you know, a Jim Lee fan or if you're just into homage covers. Those could be a lot of fun to get for the month of May. All right, let's get out of Dynamite, and let's jump into Aftershock Comics. First up, The Lonely Receiver, issue number one. Katrin Vander, a lonely video producer, buys an artificial intelligence partner that's meant to bond for life. After ten years together, her holographic wife suddenly disconnects without a warning. The breakup drives Katrin to the point of near insanity. She's alone for the first time in years and reeling from a loss she can't comprehend. I mean, I don't even know what to make of that. That is such an original crazy story that I have to have to buy this. There is an Elizabeth Torque incentive cover. I wish I knew what it looked like because I... Oh, <laughs> never mind. There it is. I love Elizabeth Torque artwork, and that is so crazy. Man, I love that to death. That is amazing. All right, next up. Sympathy for No Devils, issue number one. And what do we got here? Winston Wallace has a secret. He is all that remains of mankind and is surrounded on all sides by demons, monsters, and ghouls that picked up where humankind left off. Lying, stealing, cheating, and killing. Years ago, it was Winston's job to investigate such things. Now his ex-partner needs help solving the brutal murder of the world's largest colossal. Because he knows the secret, he knows about the magical curse that gives Winston the ability to survive a world where everything is bigger, stronger, and angrier than he is. But how long can Win's impossible luck last, and will the new case finally be the death of him? Again, so original. You know, that's one thing Aftershock has really, really been known for for the last year or a couple years or so, is their original storylines. They take chances on some of these fresh, hot writers and Wow, I usually end up knocking it out of the park every single time. Uh, 
Oh, here we go. Here's one of those awesome stories. A Walk Through Hell, complete hardcover series. 40 bucks, 256 pages, goes on sale May 6th. Now, if you haven't read A Walk Through Hell, it really, 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 really is worth buying. Uh, even in hardback, it is a hell of a read. It is so, so, so good. You know, Garth Ennis, how can you go wrong? Okay, Ben Dunn returns along with Ninja High School. Yes, Ninja High School coming back to Antarctic Press. Super excited. Ninja High School first hit the scene 35 years ago in 1989. Now this guy, he really, they call him the godfather of American manga because, wow, he was one of the originals to draw in this style. You know, before Roger Cruz, before Joe Mad, before, I mean, Ben Dunn was doing this way, way before that. Story and art. They are doing a reprint of the original 35th anniversary special and doing the new issue, 177. Yeah, this story ran for a long time. It's good to see it come back. It's going to be bi-monthly, full color, 32 pages, $3.99. AWA Upshot. Now, this company has come out of nowhere, and they've put out some really, really kick-ass books. I mean, as far as I can tell, already. Here's another one. Old Haunts, issue number one, coming out for the month. Three made men standing at the brink of retirement find their unbreakable bond put to the ultimate test when they are suddenly assaulted by the ghost of their past, confronted by decades of buried secrets, resentments, affairs, double crosses, and murders. The three friends have no choice but to unearth the deepest, darkest sin from their past and pray they don't find an empty grave. I mean, that just sounds awesome already. Oh, what do we got here? I don't even know if that was the right page. Where am I going? Oh, yes. Ha <laughs> ha. First comics. Love Town trade paperback coming out. It is the complete mini series along with a 16 page new exclusive story. So this will include issues zero through four. Love Town has an Oh man, I had so much fun with it. I really, really push Love Town because it's a great story. Uh, the 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 Yuan twins are amazing. Uh, they're great guys. Twenty one ninety nine, hundred sixty four pages. The books are in black and white with some splashes of color. So so cool, and the artwork it's very Frank Miller Sin City esque. It's really cool, and the whole story kind of gives you that feel to it as well. All right, so now what we got here? Hey, from Impact Theory, we have Neon Future coming back with Volume 2. So I know there's a lot of fans of Neon Future out there. So that's coming back to tantalize you. Coming up from Mad Cave, we have Stargazer, issue number one. Years ago, Shay and her brother Kenny and two childhood friends experienced a traumatic, unexplainable event left Kenny scarred for life. Kenny commits himself to the belief that what they experienced was an alien abduction. 20 years later, and the friends have since drifted apart, but the sudden mysterious disappearance of Kenny leads the group to reunite and discover the truth of what took place all those years ago. I mean, that sounds like it's going to be a little, oh, I want to say, uh, kind of, you know, raw and... Uh, you know, because when, when you're dealing with children and trauma, I mean, it's always going to be kind of raw, but probably a very, very good story. Especially if it starts diving into the whole alien abduction thing. I mean, it might be kind of cool. All right, what else do we got here? Spotlight on Zira, issue number one, from a company called Stonebot. Now, I have never heard of Stonebot in my life. Uh, Zira has been experimented on her entire life to help mankind create the perfect astronaut, making her smarter, faster, stronger. Apparently she is the chimp here. When Zira is allowed to have a baby, who will also be experimented on, Zira has had enough and will do whatever it takes to get herself and her child to freedom. I mean, Planet of the Apes? Anyone? I mean, that sounds really cool. I like that. Okay. And Pachow, what do we got here? Hey, we are at Scout Comics, and we have Grit number one coming out. When a routine troll hunting gig turns 
gruesome. Old Man Barrow finds himself in the company of a wannabe doomsday cult. Just how is he going to get out of the backwoods nightmare? Well, that axe ain't just for show. Grit is a southern fried sword and sorcery and pulp fantasy adventure. I like that a lot. Let's see what else we got here. And then also from Scout Comics. Again, Scout Comics, great indie comic company. Came out of nowhere and put out some beautiful stories. So, Vlad Dracul II, the Impaler, the son of the dragon, was a warlord. A Volvod, a guardian warrior, an iconic historical figure who was able to successfully strike fear into the hearts of the fearsome Ottoman Empire. Vlad is an epic story of love and war, historical ride with rivers of blood, tears, swords, and love, and a discovery of a man that was perhaps the most famous warrior of his era that inspired the Dracula legends. This is the story of the man behind the myth. So it looks like we have a historical book that's going to try to do an actual factual retelling of, you know, Vlad the Impaler. Again, awesome. I like that. And we are coming up to the end here. And we always end with Valiant Comics because they are V. They are at the end of the list. Shadow Man, issue number one. Coming from Cullen Bunn, this man knows horror. They even call him the master of horror right there. So, Shadow Man, brand new horror series from the best-selling master of horror, Cullen Bunn. The forces of darkness are awakening and they are hungry for life. Will Jack Boniface, feared by the forces of evil as the protector Shadow Man, be able to save us all? Man, look at these beautiful covers. Good stuff. And there is a pre-order edition you have to order by May 4th, 2020 to get all 12 of the, of the issues that come out along with bonus content. That's what the pre-order stuff is for. I love pre-ordering. Now, if you guys have not pre-ordered any books, uh, you should do so. They are really cool. Easy to get, easy to do. And uh, check out my buddy, RB3 Comics. He can handle your pre-order needs if you guys are interested. He has his own YouTube channel, his own Instagram. You can contact him there. RB3 Comics. Tell him Comic Vantage sent you. All right, guys. Like always, that's my video. Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. Uh, to all my current subscribers, beautiful. Love you guys. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit the little CV down in the corner, and the little bell up top, lets you know when I got all the cool stuff coming. And uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, if you uh, see your name popping up here, those are my patrons. Yeah, that's right. Thank you guys. You're beautiful. Love you all. And like always, thank you for watching and take it easy.